You've seen mods that add different cities, weapons, resources, crafting materials, and so much more. But have you ever heard of a mod that quite literally allows every zombie within a 150 tile radius to know your exact location? This is a much requested playthrough and one that I've enjoyed immensely. The entire premise is as follows. Utilizing the They Know Where You Are mod, every 10 minutes all zombies within 150 tiles of me will be pinged to my exact location, requiring me to always stay on the move. To add some extra spice to this challenge, I've gone ahead and added Pillow's random spawns, so I'll always have a truly randomized starting location and won't just be able to pick Rosewood like I've come to rely on. I also tweaked the helicopter vents, changing them from once to sometimes for an added difficulty measure. One last implementation is the Become Desensitized mod, which I set at a minimum of 2500 zombies, with the maximum being 5000 because it's a QOL mod that, quite frankly, should be in the base game. Because if I manage to kill 5000 zombies, there's no way I should be panicked when I see two standing 50 feet away. For those already in the comments asking for a mod list, it's down in the description if you'd like to play alongside of me. For traits, I went with High Thirst, Slow Healer, Underweight, Claustrophobic, Conspicuous, Prone to Illness, Smoker, Weak Stomach, and Slow Reader for negatives. For positives, I chose Dexterous, Outdoorsman, Runner, Gymnast, Fast Learner, Organized, and Athletic. It's a bit different than my normal build, but something I've been messing around with in other playthroughs and on multiplayer and I've been loving so far. Spawning into a trailer park, I give it my best guess and assumed that we spawn at Riverside, which is both a blessing and a curse. On the bright side, it's not Louisville or Bedford Falls. The downside, it's Riverside. I'm fine, I just uh, threw up in my mouth a little bit. Spawning in the trailer park was probably the best case scenario here since there's considerably less zombies than if I spawned in the center of town. Being essentially unable to loot anything from the trailers, I moved to the auto shop, where I was able to scoop up two wrenches to use as weapons. My goal here is to hit up the warehouse to find some solid melee options, then the diner across the street for some food. Ideally, I can find a car and begin making looting runs into the town, hopefully coming away with some firepower from the police station. The warehouse wasn't as bad as I anticipated it to be. Most of the zombies got stuck in the western wall, allowing me to loop through the eastern back door and grab a few more melee weapons before getting flushed back out into the parking lot. The next objective is finding a working vehicle. Working my way through the parking lot, I was able to find one car and one truck with keys, but both were out of fuel. Luckily, the fire station truck has an empty fuel can in it. Now I just need to head to the nearby gas station and I should be good to go. Since I'm a slut for loot, I got greedy at the gas station, heading inside to grab any snacks I could get my hands on. This, in turn, led to the zombies flooding in through the windows like Black Friday shoppers. Thinking on my feet, I squeezed through them and headed to the laundromat connected to the building. fleeing out the front door and making it back to the truck just in time to fuel up, start it, and hit the road. The great thing about this mod is the ability to manipulate zombie movement in the area. Since all the zombies within 150 tiles are either at the gas station or the warehouse, the roads in front of me should be relatively clear. The only thing I completely neglected with this build was grabbing the wakeful trait, which requires less sleep. For now, I'll have to sleep in my car in short increments and hope I come across some vitamins to help with this. The plan is to drive to safe locations and sleep whenever it's remotely safe. That way, I can take shorter rests, almost like I'm napping, and then continue without having to risk becoming too tired to do anything when all the zombies show up. Anyway, I have my base location picked out, at least for now. I'm planning to use the abandoned warehouses on the outskirts. It's far enough away that I shouldn't be pulling in thousands of zombies, but still close enough to the city that I can do looting runs. After arriving, I took some time to clear out the nearby zombies. With all seeable forces taken care of, I began going door to door looting all of the houses, using my truck as a massive mobile storage unit.
I was able to find a generator in one of the houses, and after waking up the next morning, I was able to catch life and living before continuing the looting run. Spoiler alert, all these houses are in ruins, and don't contain anything of value. Moving closer to the construction site, I attracted a few more zombies that I was able to avoid. After catching the noon showing for life and living, I set back out for the gas station to refuel the truck and hopefully grab some other items. To deal with the massive hordes, I had the idea to make two big loops. The first would kite the majority of the zombies into the trees. After 10 minutes or so, another ping would go off, grabbing the stragglers by the gas station, which I could then pull further into the woods before circling back to the car. After refueling, I didn't want to risk too much, so I headed back into my warehouse for the night. Tomorrow, I'd be heading into the city. In short, this entire day was a waste of time. I reached the police station relatively early, but that was the easy part. This is mainly due to the fact that it only took around 20 minutes before I'd attracted a few hundred zombies that I was unable to kite away from the station. I circled back three or four times before trying my hand at killing zombies to find a key, but that didn't work much either due to the sheer number of zombies mowing around.
At this point, I was starting to get tired, which was limiting my damage output. Not willing to risk it, I hopped back in the truck and drove back to base. Funny note here, I flipped my car making a turn, so here you go. At this point, I'll need guns to even get into the city. There's a military surplus store on the southwest of the map, so I set my sights on that and began making my way over there the next morning. While making my way through the abandoned neighborhood, I ran into a small group of zombies that I used to grind some melee skills on. I looted a shotgun and a revolver from the corpse, along with a large backpack, so I scooped that, giving me 12 more space than the duffel bag. The drive itself was pretty straightforward, both figuratively and literally. It's a straight line across one of the more deserted highways in the game, the only issue is the time it takes to drive that far. I made it to the surplus store at around noon and got to work. I had this crazy idea in my head that I could just fight the zombies fast enough, I could kill the majority before they grouped up and formed a horde. I have no idea what I was thinking, but I wasn't even close to accomplishing that. The best solution I could come up with was to actually do the opposite of my initial plan and group them up into a giant ball, leaving them far away from the surplus store. Once I'd pulled them far enough away, I circled back to the loot store, hoping for a shotgun and some ammo. Luckily, I was able to find a shotgun and several boxes of ammo. Ready to take on the giant tumor shambling my way, I stepped outside and racked a shell before getting to work.
After burning through over 112 gauge shells, I was getting tired. I had one container of vitamins, which I started shoving down my throat before repeating the initial process of grouping the remaining zombies up so I could get another few seconds in the store. I didn't find any shells this time, but I did manage to find the greatest free-to-play weapon in all of Gilinor, the Rune Scimitar, which I was able to get some solid use out of. After fighting for a few hours, it was clear the legendary sword of free-to-play noobs wasn't going to do the trick. This led to my third and final loop around, where I was able to get into the surplus store and grab an M19, two mags, and a couple boxes of 45 ACP. At this point, it was pitch black outside, and getting incredibly difficult to see anything that wasn't in the store's exterior lighting. Because of this, I would kite zombies northeast of the building, then circle back and take my shots while they were in the light. fighting carried over into the next morning when I was able to take down the last few zombies with the M19. With hundreds of dead covering the parking lot, I moved inside to loot the area. There is a locked door in the back room, but I was able to find a screwdriver on a corpse and disassemble the door, giving me free entry into the back room. This was a huge jackpot and allowed me to come away with dozens of boxes of ammo, a few rune skimmies, an Uzi, a Mac-10, an M14, several shotguns, a Colt Anaconda revolver, and an SKS. 
With the building looted, I finally went to sleep in the truck, although I forgot to move myself away from the corpses, causing me to wake up sick. With my mission now accomplished, I set off back to base, making it back at around 3 a.m. With the weapons secured, we should be able to push into Riverside fairly easily now, or at least target another POI and head there. But I think this is a good place to stop for now. We've managed to survive for around 5 days so far and have racked up 258 kills. Here's my skills so far as well. A very special thank you to my YouTube members and Patreon supporters. They are literally the reason this series is being made, as quite a few of them have suggested this idea to me. There's still a lot of work that needs to be done if we're going to have a shot at surviving long term after the power goes out, but the big issue still remains that we'll need some serious firepower if we're going to survive in any city. With the gear we have now, we might be able to make a dent in Riverside, but the payout would need to be worth it for essentially burning through our entire stockpile. In an effort to coordinate my raid, I targeted three primary locations. Number one, the school. This may seem silly at first, but we need a generator magazine, and the best place to find one would be in the school or the bookstore. If we can't find one here, we'll have the bookstore as a fallback option, or I can risk going door to door and hoping I get lucky. Either way, I should be able to find a generator mag from those options. Number two, the hardware store. Here is where I'll find seeds to begin planting a garden, along with some additional tools and potentially a sledgehammer. That brings us to our third objective, the VHS store. An obvious target, it would allow us to grind out a ton of skill levels early on with minimal effort. At some point, I'm also going to either have to find a new vehicle or fix up the truck, since the engine is failing and the truck is completely destroyed. My plan for this is to quite simply sacrifice some ammo early on to clear out the most zombies hanging around the warehouse as we visited last video. This should give us a ton of cars to work with to power level mechanics, while also freeing us up to loot the entirety of both warehouses. This should include a ton of metal sheets that we can use to fix up the truck as well. We'll circle back to this later, but for now, my focus is on Riverside. Beginning with the Riverside raid, I grabbed a rune skimmy, the Colt Python, and the M14 along with about five rounds of ammo and set out for Riverside, targeting the library first. Getting there wasn't much of an issue. I parked the truck by the bar to have a clean getaway, but with the engine in rough shape, I didn't want to risk the truck dying in the middle of a horde and would much rather take my chances on foot. The school expectedly had a ton of skilling books, but I wasn't able to find a Jenny mag. I'm not really concerned with the skill books at the moment since we're on a time constraint, given every zombie in Riverside knows where I am. On top of that, I want to give as much space open in my inventory for the hardware store. With one POI scratched off, I tried to hit up Enigma books, but really didn't have much of a chance. At this point, there's a few hundred zombies following me, and there's no exit, so even if I managed to get in, I'd effectively be cornering myself. At this point, I realized I had completely underestimated just how many zombies are in Riverside. With the sheer amount in the area, and given I'm ridiculously tired, I don't see a way that I'm getting in and out alive. With that, it was getting late and I was tired, so I changed focus to the hardware store. I'm not sure what I was hoping to accomplish though, since the hardware store also doesn't have a backdoor exit, meaning I'd just be in the same position as the bookstore if I tried anything. Moving out of the VHS store gave me the same exact issues. I thought about lighting up the streets, but I'm exhausted and exerted. After phasing through some zombies, I had no other option but to retreat to my truck. With the raid a complete failure, I don't think going in silent is the play. This really just solidified that the only way into any city is going to require some serious firepower. Instead of heading back in on the 15th, I focused on the warehouse near the gas station. I have a welder's mask, but I'll need a propane torch, which I can likely find in said warehouse. I started out with the M14 because you can hit collaterals with it.
Once I burned through all of my M14 rounds, I switched over to the Python and began slowly picking off zombies. An incredibly slow process, but much safer than swinging the skimmy around. After burning through almost 500 rounds of ammunition, there were only a couple dozen zombies left, and I felt confident enough to take them out with my sword. I finished up at around 10 o'clock that night and spent a good two hours or so just checking the corpses for a specific zombie. There was one in the pile of corpses that was carrying a sledgehammer on them that I was determined to find, though it was incredibly dark out and I couldn't see all that well. After searching for a few hours, I just changed focus to begin looting the warehouse during the night. While searching through crates, a group of zombies broke down a door, forcing me to change focus onto them. I'm not sure how they got stuck here and I didn't just path over to me with all the pings, but hey, it is what it is. Once the sun came up, I found the corpse I was looking for. The name is from a Rainbow Six Siege character. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but I also don't really care because I have a life that doesn't involve me playing off-brand Search and Destroy. To repair the truck, I'll need at least Mechanics Level 2, and to be honest, I may be better off just grinding electrical and mechanics to unlock the ability to hotwire cars. While checking out the cars in the parking lot, I unlocked the trunks of the both manufacturing vans to find four propane tanks. The goal is to come back and grab both of these along with a trailer in the parking lot, but I need to grant some skills before we get to that point. Made it back to base that afternoon, and after dumping off my loot, spent the rest of the day reading Mechanics Volume 1. I'll need to find Electrical Volume 1, so I may need to head back into Riverside to hit up the school or the bookstore, but other than that, I should be able to hotwire within the next few days or so. I returned to Riverside on the 17th, making it to school early in the afternoon. Not that it matters all that much, but the first heli event triggered, pulling in zombies in conjunction with the continuous pings. Unfortunately for me, the school had like 20 electrical volume 2s, but no volume 1s for some reason. While 
While trying to leave, I tripped over a few zombies, scraping my shin in the process. Funny enough, the house literally right across the street had Electrical 1 in it, which was kind of a giant f*** you, but at least we have it now. With both skill books under my belt, I spent the first half of the day reading Electrical Volume 1 and then disassembling all of my gear to get me just over halfway to level 1. I'm going to need a lot more watches at this point. Since I wanted to give myself a full day to heal up, I chose to hang around at the warehouse reading skill books to kill some time. I woke up the next morning fully healed and ready to get to work. First things first, I set off for the warehouses to see what all I could get done in terms of skill grinding. Obviously we have to make sure the area is safe before that though. This probably wasn't the most efficient plan by any means, since I spent several hours just roaming around the warehouses looking for anything to disassemble. Luckily, I was able to hit electrical level 1 by about 6 o'clock that night and was able to change focus to mechanics. There's no shortage of cars to choose from, so I just picked the most beat up one in the parking lot and got to work on it. One of the best aspects of this mod is the fact that any zombie within 150 tiles would already be here, which means when no one shows up to the party, I'm able to take a nap in the truck. Of course, I say this and then get hit with a dose of instant karma, since this actually almost got me killed, as the sole zombie in the area that I could hear shambling around outside found the doors. Luckily, it was just a vegan zombie, so I was able to wake up, swap over to the passenger seat, and hop out completely untouched. After a day of grinding, I was able to hit mechanics level 2, unlocking the ability to hotwire vehicles. With this newfound power, I hotwired the other truck in the parking lot along with both of those manufacturing vans. After refueling both vans, I hopped in one and towed the other back to the base, with plans to head back later for the truck. This took forever since upshifting out of first gear for some reason causes the van to lose all semblance of power. Another issue with going 15 miles an hour is that I'm not able to move over 150 tiles away within 10 minutes. So I'm actually continuously pulling all of those zombies into the middle of the road. By the time I made it to base, I decided it was worth heading back down the road to take on the zombies making their way towards me.
At this point, I felt confident enough to head back to base for the night. While organizing my loot, one of Jigsaw's victims came wandering over. This is easily one of the coolest outfits in Authentic Z and my first time seeing this specific one. After killing the zombie, I found out that you can also impale yourself with the same spikes whenever you feel like ending it all. The spikes were a little much, but I did keep the helmet to remind the zombies that I am in fact an edgelord. The next morning I set off for Riverside, equipped with a shotgun, an M19, and 500 rounds of ammunition, along with a rune skimmy and two club hammers. I threw a sledgehammer in the trunk as well, just in case. When I got to the police station, I found it strangely deserted, though it didn't take long for zombies to start wandering over. My plan originally was to kill the stragglers early and then use the sledgehammer to break down the main door to the armory. After fighting through some of the zombies with melee, I remembered that gun audio didn't really matter since the zombies would be pinged anyway, so... This was going strangely way better than expected. Eventually I was able to break down the armory door and make an initial looting run, hauling in a Spaz-12, an AK-47, and some ammo. Never thought I'd see an AK-47 in a small town police station armory, but I guess Kentucky abides by the age old adage of go around and find out. After looting the armory, I spent a good amount of time just clearing out the remaining zombies before setting off for my next objective.
And if you're wondering where all the zombies had wandered off to, well, apparently they were all too busy waiting for the midnight release of Pluto Nash. Obviously, they needed to be taken care of as well, so I got to work. Luckily for me, most of the zombies within 150 tiles were already here, so I really just had to work through the group hanging around and didn't really have to worry about any rogue groups wandering over. This worked out in a similar manner as the military surplus store, with me just kiting around zombies and popping them with a shotgun until I ran out of ammo, which in turn would then switch to the M19. When it was all said and done, I managed to burn through all of my shotgun shells and close to 300 rounds of 45 ACP before finally setting foot inside the VHS store. All of this just to claim my free copy of Space Jam. So far, we've survived the randomized spawn, looted the military surplus store, raided Riverside, making off with their entire police station armory along with their prize collection of Space Truckers VHS tapes. Today we're going to hit up Ekron to loot their bookstore and police station, as well as Rosewood's prison to secure their armory. It may sound like overkill, but we'll need all of the guns and ammo we can get our hands on for future plans. With that being said, let's get into it. Equipped with an Uzi and some hammers, I set off for Ekron on the morning of July 24th, reaching the bookstore at around 8 in the morning.
Trying to move quickly, I sprinted inside and immediately began searching each bookcase for a generator magazine. Unfortunately, this game hates me, and it wasn't here either. I ran out of time before being able to loot any actual books. At this point, hundreds of zombies were already accumulating in the area, so I changed focus to the police station. There's only one weapon locker here, so looting was pretty easy. That being said, there's only a few pistols and some ammo, which was kind of a letdown. At this point, I made one last attempt to hit up the bookstore and was able to grab volumes 2 through 5 for carpentry. With zombies surrounding my van, I figured now was a good time to hit up some of the other buildings such as the farming supply store. While looting, I did manage to find a machete, but ran out of time after the zombies broke through the door and subsequent windows, forcing me to retreat out the back. I managed to group up a few hundred or so and move them to the east, allowing me to circle back to scoop up the machete before heading back to the van. The drive down to Rosewood was pretty simple since I got to take the back roads. That was until I reached Blackwood. If you don't know, Blackwood is one of the most tightly compacted modded cities in Project Zomboid. It's impossible to maneuver a vehicle through it without a sledgehammer. Having to figure out a way around this, I took the van off-road and hoped for the best. Made it to the Rosewood School early that afternoon and booked it straight for the library. It only took like six different locations, but I finally found a generator mag. I didn't waste much time looting the rest of the school though and looped around to the van with my sights set on the prison. I made it there at around 4pm and got to work clearing the area, which was a massive undertaking. My main plan was to pull all of the zombies to the northeast side of the parking lot. This gave me enough time to run to the armory and begin grabbing any boxes of 9mm ammo that I can get my hands on. Unfortunately, it didn't take long for the zombies to make their way upstairs, causing me to trip harder than that lady from those fruity bar commercials. <laughs> Scraping my leg in the process.
fleeing to the second floor, I ripped up a shirt to use as bandages before taking out a machete to fight off the zombies who'd broken through. Completely overrun, I had no choice but to jump off the roof, landing on a zombie and scratching my arm in the process. Behind the prison fencing, the only way out for me is to either go through the tight corridors or loop all the way around to the exterior fencing. If I go inside, I have a smaller chance of surviving than Leroy Jenkins. If the situation wasn't bad enough already, I also destroyed my boots in the process, so as I made my way around to the fencing, I just continued scratching my feet, causing me to move significantly slower. I was able to make it back to my vehicle late that evening, somehow still half alive. There was a part of me that wanted to hang around and take another shot at looting the armory, but the logical side of me chose life this time around. I made it back to base around mid-morning the following day. With all the carpentry books in my arsenal, I figured now would be a great time to start working on my base some more, especially now that I have a generator magazine. I spent all of today reading Carpentry Volume 2 to get that out of the way. The next morning, I spent most of the day reading Farming Volume 1 before planting a ton of potatoes and cabbages with the seeds I looted from Ekron. Moving on to the actual building, I placed 8 crates in the western side of the warehouse. Along with those, I built a chair outside to rest on while working and a composter near the garden. The rest of the day was spent moving all of my loot inside and organizing the crates. This went on for a few days, so I'll just give you the spark notes. On the 28th, I hit carpentry level 4 while sawing logs, and ran out of nails the following day while I was building an interior wall. After waking up the next morning, I took a trip back to the warehouses to find some nails. The big holdup here was that a ton of zombies had wandered over since I haven't been here in like a week or so. I was able to grab a couple boxes of nails before the zombies had piled up, so I changed focus to deal with them. I tried to keep swapping weapons to prevent it from getting too stale using a combat knife, some hammers, and a rune skimmy to dish out some damage. Whenever I became exerted, I would just pull the zombies to the south before running over to the van next to the gas station.
After repeating the same process for several hours, it became obvious that I wasn't going to be clearing the area anytime soon. Following the trend of today's episode, I'm just not willing to risk dying over a looted warehouse, so I retreated back to base for the night with the main goal achieved, having gathered four boxes of nails. While driving back, I ran through a wandering pack of homeless people, which led to me bobbing and weaving my way directly into a tree Tiger Woods style. Forced to proceed on foot, I made it back to base late that evening. It's been a little over 20 days, and we've racked up a solid 1400 kills so far. Skill-wise, it's about what I was expecting, with aiming and reloading slowly trending upwards. I'd like to make some progress on skills like first aid, tailoring, and carpentry, but those will all come in time once our base is a little more established. Today, we'll be heading back into Riverside before checking out West Point, along with doing some prep work for our grand finale. With an unquenchable thirst for bloodshed and the rage of a hormonal Sum 41 fan, I set off for West Point's gun store. There's really no rhyme or reason as to why I chose to head there first instead of stocking up on food other than the fact that I'm a slut for guns. I loaded the back of my Bundy mobile with a Mac-10, a Beretta, a shotgun, a machete, and enough ammo to light up a small town. Judging from how bad Riverside has been, I was anticipating at least double that while heading into West Point. I also didn't do myself any favors as I ended up driving through the entire town instead of sticking to the highway and looping in from the east. Because of this, I ended up pulling thousands of zombies from throughout the town, sending all of them in the general direction of Twiggies. This is a little deadlier than it sounds and looks, since even if I'm able to go out of their range initially, they'll likely walk themselves right back into it once I park. After making it to the gun store parking lot, I hopped out of the van, equipped with a shotgun and just over 300 shells. It's entirely worth noting that this video has a considerable amount of combat in it, specifically kiting zombies and utilizing various weapons in the Firearms 41 mod to take them down. If that doesn't interest you, I totally get it. And it may either be worth skipping this section, which I'll have chapter out for you, or might I suggest watching them on 2 times speed to really pick up your perception of time. Anyway, the shotgun did most of the work early on, and I was able to spend around 8 hours with it before running out of shells.
Normally I'd panic here since shotguns are the safest weapon to use in these situations, but we're around a month in at this point and I have the luxury of just saying f*** it and whipping out around 1300 rounds of 9mm ammo and swapping over to the Beretta, allowing me to fire blindly into the crowd in a spectacle that made the citizens of Chicago proud. The most difficult portion of this fight came at around 1 in the morning, when it's pitch black out and all I have to see is a single light outside of Twiggy's. Oh, and a seizure inducing muzzle flash. At around 4am the following morning, I noticed I was getting corpse sickness. There's not all that much I can do at this point since the zombie numbers are slowly depleting and if I move too far out of the zone, I'm going to end up pulling more just outside of that 150 tile range. Normally that's not much of a problem, but I've already burned through over 400 rounds of ammo, I'm ridiculously tired, anxious, and hungry. The best course of action is to stay put, deal with the sniffles, and finish off the remaining zombies as fast as possible so I can get on with my life.
I also noticed that throughout the fighting during the night, I was bugging out the lighting. There's a good amount that I managed to catch at around 5.20 this morning, where God shuts off the lights on me just to be a dick. <laughs> Anyway, I was able to successfully clear out the area around 16 hours after arriving and use my sledgehammer to break into the gun store. Obviously, it was full of guns and ammo, so I targeted weapons that I didn't have or that were in much better condition than my current ones. Along with these, I tried to grab any ammo of use. Basically, if I had a gun that fired it, I took it. Surprisingly, I found two SKSs and another AK here. I didn't really need them since I already had one of each, but I did take the AK mag for later use. With the weapon sword looted, I headed upstairs into Twiggy's. If you don't know, the second floor is large enough that you don't proc panic if you're claustrophobic, so you can sleep here without having to deal with that. As an added security measure, I took one of the tables apart and placed it at the top of the stairs so that it would stop any zombies from walking up here. This actually ended up saving my life since a zombie had followed me into Twiggy's and began hitting the table as soon as I tried to sleep. Instead of wasting time with him, I decided to just hop back in the van and head back to base. Along the way, I decided to swing by the police station and see if there was anything worth grabbing there, but quickly changed my mind when I remembered that this isn't Riverside, and I just stirred up all of the zombies in the area by driving directly through the center of the town just 24 hours prior. This was actually pretty cool to see the zombies cluster this way though, and led to some pretty chaotic moments on my way back. Especially since I clearly didn't learn my lesson and thought the smartest thing to do would be to drive directly through the center of West Point again instead of just hopping onto the highway. After taking the rest of the day to drive back to base and rest up, I re-geared and set out for the Riverside Gigamart. I'm almost completely out of food at this point, and my crops are still a week or so away from harvesting. Since we have a ton of fun new toys to play with, along with a stockpile of ammo, I figured hitting a larger POI like this would have a high success rate compared to going door to door on some of the neighborhood houses, or trying to gather a few days worth of food from the farmhouses out in the county. The only other alternative was trapping or foraging, and to be honest, I'd rather eat glass than spend a day doing that. The drive-in felt oddly quiet, almost as if I was just here a few days ago, recreating Operation Iraqi Freedom. Unfortunately, it didn't take long for zombie clusters to organize and mount a counterattack, ambushing me while I was deep-throating sticks of butter. At the time, I had been binge-watching World War II history videos like any other dad tends to do, and thought this would be a perfect time to break out a vintage weapon of the time period. This ended up taking the majority of the day, but also led to some incredibly close calls, so I'll let it play out similarly to the West Point scene. Again, it's chaptered out, so if this isn't your thing, you can always speed past it.
After fighting through zombies for several hours, I was able to clear an opening to escape through. Unfortunately for me, it didn't factor in the power of corpses strewn about the ground and managed to flip my car while driving back to base. On my way back, I figured I might as well hit up the gas station to the northwest of me. It's a small single pump station that's seemingly abandoned, so I didn't anticipate many zombies being in the area. In actuality, there were almost as many zombies here as there were in the residential area of Riverside, because we've managed to break zombie pathing so hard at this point that the game just doesn't know what to do anymore. The fight continued way longer than it should have. I'm honestly not sure what I was hoping to accomplish here. It was already late, almost pitch black, and there were way too many zombies for such a small potential reward. Like seriously, I'm fighting dozens of zombies for what? I mean, a bag of chips? Like, it doesn't make sense. Eventually I came to my senses and just went home empty handed. Well, actually worse than empty handed. After dealing with an unwelcome guest the next morning, I did some housekeeping. Really just a lot of stuff I've been putting off in favor of causing chaos in the community. I built out a small library and stocked it with all my books and magazines before leveling up my carpentry to level 6 while adding some additional storage crates. With that taken care of, I spent the rest of the day cleaning up the junk strewn about the floor. The following morning, I set off for the warehouse to grab a truck that I left behind a while back. Given the events of yesterday, I've got to travel to the warehouse on foot since I have the driving skills of a methed up Dale Earnhardt and managed to wreck both vans already. Naturally, this led to me just walking down the middle of the road with a machete, slaughtering any zombies that even remotely wandered into my view. I reached the warehouse by that evening and began the process of clearing out the zombies. A lot of them had either respawned or migrated over here by this point, so this has become more of a chore than what I was hoping for. If you're wondering why I don't just hop in the truck and drive off, well, it's out of fuel. And with the zombies in the area, I'm not able to buy myself enough time to dump a quick gallon into the tank and get out of there. It wasn't all bad though, I did manage to loot a fire axe off a corpse along with a hand axe from one of the warehouses while I was kiting zombies around.
Now that we have a working vehicle, enough food to last until the harvest, and secure defenses, we can focus on the upcoming grind. I'm planning something massive for the finale, and for that, I'll need over 250 planks. It's going to be a small time jump in order to save you the boredom of watching me chop trees and saw logs for a week straight. Currently, I'm sitting at 2,221 kills. Not bad, considering the entirety of the county wants me dead and knows where I live. This is what my skills look like for those interested in tracking the progress there as well. It's hard to think we've started with a random spawn and a prayer, and not only managed to survive, but have built a long-term sustainable base and filled it with enough guns and ammo to go to war with the state of Kentucky. Today, I want to do something big, like 2 FPS game crashing big. Obviously, there's been a small time skip, so let me recap what I've been up to. First, I chopped down a ton of trees and spent that time sawing those logs into planks, which we'll need in a few minutes. After that, I went back to the warehouses to grab one of the trailers sitting around. Then proceeded to binge watch my entire collection of VHS tapes. From there, I went out and found an antique oven that'll serve literally no purpose in this video, but I was excited to find one, so it's in the mini montage now. Once all that was taken care of, I finally harvested my crops, giving me more than enough food to survive on. Alright, now that we've made it through that incredibly long-winded intro, we can get to the actual finale. It's been a little over a week in-game, and during that time, I found that it's incredibly boring living out here. I mean, come on, it's gotten so bad that even the neighbors up and left. In all honesty, not much goes on this far out of the fray. It's incredibly quiet unless I head into town for some needless reason. All of this to say, I think it's time to head to greener pastures. Funny enough, this video is almost over before it even got started. While driving to my destination, I ran into a group of migrating zombies perfectly timed out with a car wreck in the middle of the street. I lost control of the car after hitting a zombie and almost got myself stuck while trying to recover. I had a similar instance occur a few hours later when I wrapped the trailer around a phone pole directly in front of a group of zombies. Luckily, I've played this game enough to know that panicking over something like this is a surefire way to get yourself killed, so I just kept finagling the truck back and forth until I was able to get around the pole and push through the zombies surrounding me. After that, it was smooth sailing for about 5 hours, until apparently Zomboid thought I was having too smooth of a driving experience and felt the need to spawn a massive horde of zombies directly in the center of the road. Again, panicking this situation will only get you killed. It's best to just keep mashing A and D while holding W to keep moving the wheels back and forth and nudging the zombies out of the way, all while praying your engine survives the push. Eventually, you'll be able to work your way through the group and back on your way. By the end of the day, I was pretty close to my destination, but didn't want to make a final push during the night while exhausted. I ended up finding a nice quiet place to pull over and rest for the night, continuing my journey the following morning. At around 11.30am on August 18th, I rolled into Bedford Falls. With a crowd of zombies waiting in open arms, I parked my truck and got to work securing the area. It's worth noting that I'm carrying 11 double stag magazines for my Beretta, so I'm going to be cutting out the several minutes of reloading because no one wants to watch all that play out. That being said, if there's any close calls, I'll keep those in to spike your blood pressure a little bit.
As if strolling into Bedford Falls wasn't hard enough, I was faced with another hurdle when some jackass in a helicopter came by to check out what I was up to. Side note, this has absolutely nothing to do with the remainder of this video, but I found a Jason Voorhees zombie amongst the crowd and wanted to point that out, so here you go. Alright, back with chaos. After dealing with zombies for the majority of the day, I managed to clean up the first horde by 7 o'clock that evening. While walking through the corpse-ridden street, I managed to find a cowboy hat and figured it was time for a return to my true form, especially for what I had planned. Also, I realized I didn't show off what gear I brought, so here's a quick peek at some of the stuff in the trunk. To end the night, I backed the truck up a few hundred feet so I wouldn't pull any additional zombies from Bedford out, and after finding a peaceful section of road, went to sleep. Waking up the next morning, I swapped over to the M19 since my Beretta was effectively destroyed. The good news is that today is the initial setup day for my project. The downside of that is I'll be moving deeper into the city, thus pulling larger amounts of zombies. In order to pull this build off, I need one very specific building. See, it's gotta have a large fencing to the north, east, and west sides with only the southern plot exposed. This is vital as it impacts the zombie pathing in a very specific way, which I'll need to pull this off. That being said, I don't want to start building until the area is safe. I've got my work cut out for me on this one.
the surrounding area wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, and by early afternoon, I was able to start building out my trap. Even with careful planning, I found myself out of planks by the afternoon, forcing me to chop down some trees to finish up the project. With the leftover planks, I built out some additional space on top of the wall of stairs. This will come in handy when I set things in motion later on. This is what the trap looks like, semi-completed. There is still a little more that needs to be done, such as a place for me to hang out in, but the general principle is completed, so let me explain how this works. I took a page out of my friend Ambiguous Amphibian's book and built a line of stairs wall to wall with fencing. Since zombies can't break the large fencing, they'll automatically path around it to the stairs. The generator at the top will pull zombies toward it due to the sound radius. If you're wondering why the ping every 10 minutes isn't good enough, that only works when zombies have a clear path towards you. I will be hiding out and Frank style in this house, watching it all from the second floor. Once I'm past the generator, I'll disassemble the one tile in between us, effectively cutting out any way for a zombie to reach me. This is why the generator is so important, as it'll be responsible for pulling zombies in once the player pings are effectively neutralized. The small set of flooring appears to allow zombies to push themselves up the stairs like one of those coin pusher games at an arcade. Once they reach the top, they'll be pushed over the platform and inside the fencing of the house. Zombies can't destroy the stairs or the large fencing, which will effectively lock them inside this pit. I call it Zomboid Fire Vest 2023. I also brought along enough food and water to last myself several days up here before I'll need to get creative. Along with basic necessities, I brought along my AK, the Spaz Shotgun, which I'll use to thin out most of the hordes. As a failsafe, I also brought several Molotovs that I can use to burn the zombies from a safe vantage point. The only downside to that is I've built into the house, so once the house catches on fire, I'll need an escape plan ready to go. With my trap set, all that's left to do is group up as many zombies as possible. As I'm sure you've seen by now, this is incredibly easy to do since my location is pinged to every zombie within 150 tiles every 10 in-game minutes, meaning all I have to do is walk around Bedford for a few hours and I'll naturally attract some of the tens of thousands of zombies in the area. To be honest, the most difficult part of this wasn't even kiting the massive amount of zombies through the streets, it was trying to maneuver my way back down the block to my setup at 11 o'clock at night without running cat's eyes. Seriously, do you know how hard it is to see a zombie outline in this? My face was practically pressed against the screen looking for any movement so I could shove run my way through anything in front of me. That being said, I was able to make it back to the top of the trap, start the generator, and disassemble the walkway before zombies started flooding up the stairs. Here's a little glimpse of the trap in action. I can't really do much at this point besides wait, so I'm going to let this run for a few days and we'll come back to check on it intermittently. Alright, it's been about 4 days in game and uh, as you can see in the top left corner, we are chugging along. It gets even worse when I fully zoom out, but here's what we're working with. There's so many zombies that there aren't even texturing in anymore, they're just black silhouettes for the most part. I even tried to shred through some of them with a shotgun, but if anything it really only made the situation worse with all the blood splatter and all. I used the rest of my planks to build out a small platform off to the side of the house so I can throw molotovs without insta-dying from hitting the roof. That being said, there's still some uncertainty here. This seems to be the only way out of the situation, but if I hit the building, it'll burn down my platform before killing the zombies, which will result in a pretty brutal death. All things considered, I'm completely out of ideas as to how I can escape this, so let's let it ride. Well, the first one went behind me. This probably doesn't seem like a big deal, but keep this in the back of your mind for now. It'll come back later. The second throw managed to hit the platform, igniting the generator. Best case scenario, it'll spread along the stairs, killing all the zombies outside of the trap. My third Molotov managed to land inside the trap, igniting hundreds of zombies in the initial blast. All that's left to do now is sit back and wait patiently. One thing I noticed almost immediately is that the siding of the house already caught fire. This is bad news for me, considering my platforms are connected to the house. This only gets worse when at 7am, the fire spread onto my platform. Thinking on my feet, I used most of my water to put it out, though I'm not sure if that'll fully stop the spread or if it'll continue. 
Approximately two hours after throwing the Molotovs, I recorded my first kills. What started as only a couple quickly spiraled into a few dozen, which began the largest snowball I've ever seen in Zomboid. At one point, I was killing over 20 zombies per tick, and after only a few minutes, I was already up over 4,000 kills. This, in turn, brought me from 2 FPS all the way up to 42. At this point, I began speeding up time, having completely forgotten about the first Molotov. Remember when I told you to keep that in the back of your mind throughout the section? Well, that's because while I was focused on watching Burning Man Zomboid Edition, the first Molotov was putting in work, climbing from the grass outside of the trap, and teleporting its way onto my platform, exactly one tile behind me. Having used most of my water to put out the first fire, I didn't have enough to put out this one, effectively trapping me between burning to death on a platform or burning to death in a pool of zombies. Figuring this was the end, I chose to light a cigarette on the open flames, which somehow put out the fire. Don't ever let anyone tell you smoking kills, guys. It literally saved my life here. With the majority of the zombies burnt to a crisp, I took a leap of faith and hopped down, using the AK to clear out the remaining zombies. After making a stupid mistake that almost got me killed, I fled the area, leaving my cowboy hat to burn in the flames. Even after clearing out over 4,500 zombies, there's still thousands littering the streets, so I switched focus from gunning them down to mixing them in with the pyro zombies. This way, the fire should continue to spread from zombie to zombie, doing my dirty work for me. All I need to do is simply stay alive and wait them out. Easier said than done, for sure, but it's still doable. An issue I was running into with this method was that I'm ridiculously tired. Normally not the end of the world, but this impacts my rate at which your endurance recovers. All of this to say I can't simply stop and rest at a park bench to recover and keep moving. I'll just continue to slowly deplete my stamina until the zombies finally catch up to me. Tired, hungry, and exhausted, I found a solace in a small pond in the middle of the woods. While waiting for George to tell me about the rabbits, I had an overwhelming feeling of emptiness. There is no happy ending. They're never going to stop. How can you possibly win when your enemy knows your exact location, even when you don't? There's only one way this was ever going to end. This is how you died, after all. Thank you all so much for watching. This was a new challenge for me and something I've never gotten to really mess around with before. It's a ton of fun and I highly recommend giving it a go for yourself if you're ever looking for something fresh. Big thank you to my YouTube members and Patreon supporters. You're the reason I get to make content like this and I'll forever appreciate that. I'd like to give a quick thanks to Mystic and Louie for recommending this playthrough to me a while ago. This video quite simply would not have been possible without them. I appreciate you all. And as always, thanks for stopping by.